Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday number 47 on the Mana Leak. I'm John as always, and we've got another pack of Oath of the Gatewatch sitting here. We have four, count them, four weeks left until we'll be doing Shadows over Innistrad set reviews. We'll be saying goodbye to the Gatewatch, or at least we'll be seeing what new adventures await the Gatewatch on Innistrad. But we're going to open this pack here. We're going to look through all the cards and we're going to decide what we would take. Pack one, pick one, if this were a draft. All right, up first we have an Akum Flame Seeker and a bit of a glare. The glare is a little bit better there ish. We have an Akum Flame Seeker, two and a red for a human shaman ally. It's a 3 2. It has cohort. When you tap it and tap an non tapped ally you control, you can discard a card. And if you do, you get to draw a card. Totally fine ability, totally fine stats, totally fine cost. Not first pickable in any way, shape, or form. There's no pack where I would ever take this first pick, or at least I hope there's not a pack where I would take this first pick. Totally playable, but just not exciting. Up next, we have Dazzling Reflection. Dazzling Reflection is one and a white for an instant. You gain life equal to target creature's power. The next time that creature would deal damage this turn, prevent that damage. So it's kind of like a single creature fog, and you get some life. I have seen some people like this card, and, and like is such a strong word for me for this card. Um, I, I would say I hate this card. I think it's bad. I'm not a big fan of fogs. I'm not a big fan of individual fogs, even if I do get some life gain off of it. Maybe if I I desperately needed some life gain somehow. If I was beat down and I had no way of not being beat down and my opponent was beat down, uh, maybe I would sideboard this in, but definitely not first pickable and not even main deckable, I don't think. Next up, we have Slip Through Space. Slip Through Space is a single blue mana for a sorcery. It has Devoid. Target creature can't be blocked this turn, and you get to draw a card off of it. Not exciting, not all that great. It can enable Surge, sir, sure, but you shouldn't play bad cards to enable Surge. You should play normal cards to enable Surge, and uh, even Surge isn't that amazing uh, outside of a couple of spells here or there this is a card that you can include if you really desperately need a 23rd card you're certainly not first picking it though up next we have brute strength brute strength is one in a red for an instant target creature gets plus three plus one against trample until end of turn Totally fine combat trick. I do like Sure Strike from Battle for Zendikar a little bit more than Brute Strength. Uh, for sure Strike gives plus three plus zero, but it gives First Strike as opposed to uh, getting Trample. Uh, it's a fine combat trick. It often sort of functions as removal, but uh, it's not anything special. You can get one of these if you want one. It's kind of a 23rd card as well. Next up, we have Canopy Gorger. Canopy Gorger is four green green for a 6-5 worm, and that's it. End of story. It is a vanilla 6-5 for six. Uh, the double green really hurts this, even if it was five and a green. I don't think I would play it. Uh, creatures need to have abilities, or they need to be very uh, efficiently costed, and this is neither. So total pass. Definitely not first pick. Uh, definitely not pick ever. You take this because it's the last card in the pack. Uh, not very good. Next up, we have a Kozlex Translator, and a Reality Hemorrhage was hiding behind there. We saw that. Kozlex Translator is four and a black for a creature all drowsy drone. It's a 3-5. It has Devoid, and you can pay a life to add a colorless mana to your mana pool one time a turn. No extra times a turn. Be aware of that. I've seen a couple people sometimes try to pay uh, two life for two mana. No dice. Uh, totally fine blocker. 3-5 five for five is okay for blocking, and it just kind of sits there, and it really generates you a ton of mana. This doesn't really go in the black-red aggressive colorless deck. This goes in kind of the black-blue colorless deck, uh, where you're going to sit back, you're going to have that colorless mana, and you're going to use your essence depleters or, or slaughter drones or things like that on the defensive while you get out your big bombs. Not a first pick card, though. Next up, we have Reality Hemorrhage. Reality Hemorrhage is a first pick card, although not an amazing one. One and a red for an instant with the Void. Reality Hemorrhage deals two damage to our creature or player. It's a shock for one more mana than shock usually costs. Uh, it's fine. You know, we will play a two mana shock. It, it's not amazing. There's a ton of stuff this doesn't kill, but it kills a ton of early game stuff. It kills most two drops, uh, if not all two drops. Kills some three drops. Uh, just really solid. It can finish off creatures in combat, and most importantly, it can go to the face. It can be that extra two damage you need to finish off the game. Uh, it's super versatile and then super decent. I have, I think, first picked this in very weak packs, but hopefully we see something better. Next up, we have Crumbling Vestige. Crumbling Vestige is a land at common. 
Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, you, I, you, bleh, you get to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And from then on, you can tap to add a single colorless mana to your mana pool. Totally fine fixing. Significantly better than a waste. Um, yeah, you'll never first pick it. But if you need colorless mana, you should be totally okay playing this. Uh, that's kind of the end of the story on Crumbling Vestige. Next up, we have Gravity Negator. Gravity Negator is 3 and a blue for a creature called Drowsy Drone. It's a 2-3. It has Devoid. It has Flying, and whenever it attacks, you can pay a colorless mana. And if you do, another target creature gains Flying until end of turn. Uh, totally fine. I like it. I've seen it go really late in packs lately, and I'm not sure why. I know blue is uh, a color that people are down on a little bit, but I still think this is a pretty solid card. I'm a, I'm a fan of it, and uh, I definitely like it if I'm in colorless. I don't think I would ever first pick it, but I do enjoy it. Next up, we have Hedron Crawler. Hedron Crawler is two uh, generic mana for an artifact creature construct. It's an 01, and you can tap it to add a colorless mana to your mana pool. Totally fine. Uh, we used to first pick Golden Hind in Journey into Nyx uh, draft, and it was a, a 2-1 for 3? Yeah, for 3, I think. Maybe for 2. No, it was for 2. That tapped for a green mana. This taps for a colorless mana. This, you know, turns on a whole bunch of your old Drazi dudes. Totally fine. I would consider first picking this in a very weak pack, and I would always play it in almost every deck. I'm a fan of ramp. I'm a fan of two mana ramp, especially. Um, yeah, hopefully this pack gets better because this is uh, fighting for first pick right now. Next up, we have Essence Depleter. Essence Depleter is two and a black for a creature all drowsy drone at uncommon. It's two, three. It has devoid and for one and a colorless target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. You get to drain them for one and it doesn't tap or anything. You can do this two times, three times, four times, as many times as you have colorless and generic mana. I'm a fan of Essence Depleter. I've finished a number of games with Essence Depleter. Uh, it's just a really big life swing, especially if you can do it two times or three times a turn. If you are a heavy colorless based deck. Uh, I really like Essence Depleter. I wouldn't be too upset taking Essence Depleter first pick uh, if I had to. Next up, we have Jiraga Auxiliary. Jiraga Auxiliary is one green white for a creature elf soldier ally. It's a 2-3, and for four green and a white, you get to support two. Totally fine late game card, and I know a lot of people are really high on this in the uh, the really good green white support deck, but six mana is a lot. Six mana is a lot to ask for for support two. Enough that I would never ever consider first picking this, but were I in that green-white deck, I would consider picking this up, you know, uh, maybe pack two pick one, um, but I would have to know that I was in that deck. I would never first pick it. I, I just don't think it's that amazing of a card. I, I can definitely see its value, but I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it. I know a lot of people are, um, but I just don't think it's a first pick at all. The final on common is Unity of Purpose. Unity of Purpose is three and a blue for an instant. Uh, support two, untap each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So probably at least the two that you supported, if not any other ones that you have counters on already. Uh, I don't super like these cards. I don't super like shoulder to shoulder or lead by example. Lead by example might be the best because it's like two mana. Um, this one's fine, but it just doesn't fit into really any of the blue decks that exist. Uh, so I've never really played with this card. I've never really played against this card. I just, I don't think it's a pickable or overly playable card. So Unity Purpose, get out of here. Let's see what our rare is. Our rare is Sylvan Advocate. Sylvan Advocate is one in a green for a creature, Elf Druid Ally. It's a two, three, it has vigilance. And as long as you control six or more lands, Sylvan Advocate and land creatures you control get plus two, plus two. I love Sylvan Advocate. Sylvan Advocate, uh, Sylvan Advocate is fantastic. It's a 2-3 two, for 2. Awesome. Right there. Way better than a bear. It has Vigilance. It gets even better. And if you uh, have this survive until late game, or if you play it late game, it's a 4-5 for 2, which is incredible. Um, you know, most 2-2s two or 2-3s or two for 2 would fall off in the late game, but this one doesn't. And then you get the bonus of... Uh, giving all of your land creatures plus two plus two if uh, you have embodiments or if you have awakened stuff going on. Uh, I really like Sylvan Advocate. Uh, I have it in my league deck right now at my local game store. Uh, yeah, super happy with Sylvan Advocate. Do we have a foil or an expedition? Of course not. I still have an open one. I don't think I ever will. So our pick is looking like Sylvan Advocate or Essence Depleter or Reality Hemorrhage. 
I don't really think this one's terribly close. Essence Depleter and Reality Hemorrhage are on a different level to Sylvan Advocate, I think. Sylvan Advocate is just super solid. As I said, it's a very super efficiently costed card. It's amazing on turn two. It's pretty darn solid on turn six, uh, for two mana especially. Super, super happy with Sylvan Advocate. I would first pick this almost every time I see it. Maybe not over an Oblivion Strike, but that's about it. Definitely let me know what your pick would have been. Would it have been the Advocate? Would it have been the Depleter, the Hemorrhage, or something else? You can let me know in the comments below. You can also click on the little card in the top right-hand corner and choose from the poll up there. Uh, or you could do both if you uh, feel super interacty today. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. You can find me on Twitter at the Leak. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Leak. You've already found me here on YouTube. You've got the comment section down below. Please make use of that. As well, if you enjoy my videos, please click that little thumbs up icon. That lets me know that you like the videos. That lets the world know that you like the videos and keeps my videos rising up through the ranks. As well, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should. There's a link below every video. There's one in the outro of every video. And clicking that will keep you up to date on all the latest videos as they come out. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.